Good evening and welcome to Black Mental Health is Black Health. I'm your host, Bronwyn Lucas, an LPC, licensed professional counselor, ready to talk to you tonight. However, if you've ever been here before, you know we start off with some deep, deep breathing, a chance to allow us to who have that woo moment and decompress from the day. So let's get started with our breathing. If you've never been here before, let me tell you how we do it. I will give you a slow count in to four and you'll breathe in. And I'll give you a slow count out to four and you'll breathe out. So let's get started. Breathe in, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Just that woo moment to say, whoo, I need a minute to get started. So tonight we have an interesting topic, I think. And it's all about the holidays. You know, we are getting into the holiday season. Thanksgiving is 14 days away and every other commercial has something to do with um, some holiday, mostly Christmas, but we're hearing Thanksgiving, we're hearing Christmas, we're hearing all of this, all the joys of the holidays, which everybody doesn't have. And that's kind of what we're going to look at tonight. What do we do if we're the one who doesn't have the holiday joy? Or what if we have it, but mm, someone close to us does not? How do we manage it? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Ooh, that holiday, holiday, holiday. As the topic says, are we going to run from it or run to it? Um, and we might change. One day you're running toward it. It's the best thing. And the next day, oh, Lord, I can't manage it. So we're going to look at that. Just what goes on during the holidays. Now, normally in the holiday season, I will talk about, you know, just the holiday blues, things that people experience um, and why this is not always a good time. But I'm going to look at that in a little more this time. I've done it in the past where I've, I've done talks on numerous places about the holiday blues. People always want to talk about it and we will. But we're going to look at three areas tonight. Just... Um, how do you handle it sometimes if you are enjoying the holidays, but you're doing too much? Um, and then we will look at the holiday blues, and then we'll just take a special look at just grief and holidays, because that grief can add a special meaning to the holidays. So let's just look at, um, first let's look at NAMI, National Alliance of Mental Illness. They do talk about just the holidays and they have a definition for it. Um, this is what how they define holiday blues. As high, you have high expectation, loneliness, and stress can lead to the holiday blues during the holiday season from Thanksgiving to New Year's. In some cases, the symptoms are temporary, but they can be serious and last for more than two weeks, leading to clinical anxiety and or depression. And part of this can be um, some people can experience what's called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. And guess what? You're feeling sad if you have the SAD. Seasonal Affective Disorder happens when um, the days get shorter, it's darker, longer, it's cold, you're not going outside, you don't have the benefit of just feeling that vitamin D, feeling the sun invigorate you. And it can become just depressing. You just don't get outside. Now, it's more impactful in some places than others. Here in Texas, we don't have the same kind of cold that other places do. However, when we do get our cold, we don't want to go outside. Ew. Um, today, I'm in uh, the Dallas area in Arlington. It was not the day to go sit outside in my backyard. It was raining and it was cold or cool in the air. But, you know, that rain made it feel cold. So you're inside more. You're losing that. So seasonal affective disorder can last from, mm, it's the winter month, maybe around now, starting in November and going through whenever your winter season ends. Um, and so it's separate from 
the holiday blues. But the holiday blues, if you're experiencing seasonal affective disorder, they can kind of blend together. And that's if that is the case, then that is a time to get some help. Uh, some people use medication. Some people use therapy to find and develop coping skills for themselves. How do I get through this? It's not good. I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying life. And that's the time to reach out and get help. But we're going to look at um, just this whole holiday season. So what if you're the person who loves the holidays? It is just wonderful. I can't wait. Mm, it's cool. There's a crispness in the air and there's so much to do. I just love it. Maybe that's you. And if so, awesome. That's great. I encourage you to still listen because sometimes that same person can be burned out in the holidays. Or you might hear something that can help someone who doesn't have the same feelings that you do have. If you're watching on Facebook right now, share it on your page um, so more people can hear about how we're managing the holidays. So let's think about first that busy person. Sometimes a person can be just caught up in the holiday moment and it's so much to do. And all of a sudden you find yourself bottoming out. Oh, it's just too much. I can't do this. Um, and you're overwhelmed because probably you've given yourself too much to do, you know, and it's like, oh, I can't manage this anymore. It's just too, too much. So what are some things to do if that is you? Um, so you're enjoying this holiday time, but I can't do all this. So um, the first thing I want to say to you, if this is you, you love the holidays, but you find yourself getting too much. First thing to do is remember, you don't have to do everything. I talk to so many people who feel like they have to do it all. Well, if I don't do it, the children are going to do it. My spouse isn't going to do it. So I have to do X, Y, Z. And I just have to do it all. And that may be very true. It won't get done if you don't do it. But then ask yourself. Will my family suffer if I don't do X, Y, Z? I have a list of 20 things. I just can't do all 20. Of that 20, will your family suffer if you don't do them all? Because sometimes we set ourselves up and have these unrealistic expectations. Will your family suffer if you don't do it all? Will the world come to an end if you don't do it all? Will your personal world come? crashing down on you if you don't do it. If you don't go to every holiday party, make every holiday dish, buy every holiday gift, will your life suffer? It may not. Then ask yourself, do I even need to do all this? Do I need to buy every gift that I'm planning to buy? Do your children really need all those gifts? Are you do you agonize because you can't afford it? Then maybe you're your your um, perspective is just a little off. Do I need to do everything that I'm doing over the holidays and causing myself stress? To that end, are the holidays causing you, uh, they're taking away your joy. Hmm. Because you're so busy doing so much to make it right for everyone else that your joy is gone? Wow, if that's the case, Maybe it's time to think about regrouping and doing something a little different. Don't you want your joy? Mm. Not a good place to be. So if you're in that boat, what can you do? First off, take a break. As I said, you don't have to do everything. Give yourself a break. Give yourself your own time out. I can't do this anymore. I'm taking a break. Learn the value of saying no. No, I can't do it. I don't need to do it. I'm not the only one. Okay, if I don't do it, it won't get done. Well, guess what? It won't get done. The value of no. Just a sidebar, I'm doing a workshop this weekend in the Arlington area called The Power of Yes. Learning to say yes to yourself and no to everybody else. It's this Saturday at 11 o'clock. We have a few slots available. So you can um, message me right here on Facebook if you're interested. But say no. It's a powerful word. Some people say no is a complete sentence. I say no is a complete paragraph. And sometimes it's just a complete story. No, I can't do it. And you don't have to explain. No, can't do it. 
be honest with others about what you're able to do, because sometimes we take on too much and that's part of it, not being able to say no. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Really? And sometimes we're even, you know, people will ask you to do something and you say yes. And then they're like, are you sure? And it's like, oh, yeah, I got this. No, you don't. And it's OK that you don't have it. Just back away. Be honest. Give yourself, as I said earlier, a timeout. Just I'm, I'm taking a break, taking a break. Change your expectations. Sometimes we have expectations around the holidays. They have to be this or that. Um, do they really? Are you setting yourself up for something that is too difficult to manage? If so, they're your expectations. Claim them and change them. You don't have to do everything. And here's the last one. Ask and accept help. Ask for help and accept help. Hmm. Help. That's a four-letter word. Yes, it is. Ask for it. It's so easy to get caught up in, I can do it myself. I can do it myself. No, you can't not. You can't do everything yourself. So when you're um, finding yourself just way too busy trying to manage the holidays and losing your joy, ask for help. It's okay. It doesn't mean you're a weak person. It just means you're a human being. You can't do it by yourself. So the first area is how to manage the activity in the holidays. You don't have to do it all. But I want in the next, as I said, I'm looking at three areas, how to manage just the activity, even when you enjoy it, what causes the blues and how to deal with it and dealing with grief. So we're going to look at now just the holiday blues. I defined it already. And what do we do with this? And tonight episode um, is going to be a little shorter than the 45 minutes, I believe, um, just for some for a different reason, but it'll be a little bit shorter, just so you know. But what causes the blues and what do we do with it? I gave you that definition with NAMI and I wanted to read it again, those high expectations um, and loneliness and stress can lead to the holiday blues. Um, and this time the holiday blues goes from Thanksgiving to New Year's because that's a holiday time. So let's look at that. It's starting in 14 days, as I said, it's Thanksgiving. That's this time where, oh, we're all getting together. I call it the eating holiday. You're getting together with family, friends. Now they call it family, uh, your friends who are like family, just people you want to be around and you're sharing a meal. People tend to overeat on Thanksgiving. Like I say, it's that eating holiday. You plan for it, but it's not just the eating. It is just being with people you love. But if you don't have that, and that's what you see again, you know, the media is putting all of this out there and you see all of this in front of you, what the holiday should be from Thanksgiving to New Year's. If that's not your reality, it can be very difficult because you're bombarded with that's the norm. That's what you should feel. That's what you should experience. That's what you should have in your life. And when you don't, does that say something about you? Is something wrong with you because that's not your world? No, it's really not everybody's world. It is just what's put in front of you. But when you see that and you're bombarded with it, boy, if it's not you, you can feel a certain way. Um, so what do you do? What are some factors and other things that play in it other than just the media? Um, other people can have expectations of you during the holidays, too. And maybe you're not up to doing it. You know, I talked about the people who do too much and just a word of uh, and admonition to say back off. But wow, what if people have a lot of expectations because you've always done it and this year you don't want to? Goes back to the no. Um, some other things that we experience during this time is a change in food and alcohol consumption. How does that play into it? Well, alcohol is actually a depressant, but you go to so many holidays and maybe there's just that extra wine or maybe it's a margarita bar for a holiday party or a daiquiri bar or just their drinks around. Holiday parties tend to have alcohol. 
if you're already in a semi-depressed state, drinking or consuming a depressant is not going to benefit you. But a lot of people want to drink to avoid how you're feeling. Well, I just have a drink and it'll numb my pain. But it will depress your pain and depress you. Food. When people are in a depressed mood, they often will eat too much or not eat enough. And there are certain foods that can impact your mood or you just even in that uh, stuff feeling and things aren't good. But yeah, changing in your food habits. If you're a person who normally eats really healthy and you start eating a lot of just junky food because you're going to holiday parties and you're not thinking about it and you're off of your normal eating regime, that can impact you because you do feel different uh, based on what you put in your body. So if you're eating your salads every day or just your veggies, your fruits, you're still consuming your meat, but you're doing things in moderation. Um, And then all of a sudden you're eating all the little fried pastries and fried foods that are out there at the holiday gatherings, all the high fat foods, and that's not your diet. Your body will not be happy with you. So it's a time to say, oh, that can impact your mood. When your body's not happy physically, your brain's not going to be happy with you either. There is also more financial stress during the holidays. We want to buy gifts. We want to go out to different little gatherings. And then maybe you need to take something for the host. Maybe you need to, um, they're going to, there will be a gift exchange. Oh, they're going to do a white elephant. That's so much fun, but there's still more money. And the minimum amount is this. So it's so, you know, it's just so many little things you want to be involved in, but they cost money and your money may be tight. Again, you don't have to do everything. You can say no, and you can pick and choose, how am I going to spend money? I have it, but I don't want to go into debt over the holidays, which is something that people do. I mean, I'm I'm just going to avoid that. That's the smartest thing is to avoid holiday debt because that financial stress will not end in January because the bills will just start coming in in January. So, yeah, when you're feeling like this is just too much, stop it. Can't do it. Um, Sometimes at the end of the year, end of this holiday season or leading up to it, um, we begin to think about all the things we didn't accomplish over the year. Well, here, reframe that. Instead of letting that be your focus, think of what did you accomplish? We can all come up with, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, but what did you do? We can think of the sad things that happened. Was there anything good that happened? In some years, it feels like, no, nothing. Dig a little deeper. And even if it's a small, minute thing, begin to reframe what you're looking at and saying, okay, I can find something. I did do this. I did do that. So change the way you're thinking and think about what you did accomplish. Not what you didn't accomplish because you did accomplish something. Whatever that something is, it was something. So look at what you did do, not what you didn't do. Mm, here's another thing on my list of things that contribute to the holiday blues. Family drama. Holidays can bring out some serious family drama. Maybe people haven't been together in a while. Maybe they've been avoiding being together. And cousin someone show shows up. What are you doing here? Mm. The brother who's been gone for five years shows up. He just shows up like he's been here forever. Family drama. Family drama can occur any time of the year, but the holidays can heighten it because more people are together. That's real. Um, Learn how to reframe that. Wow, the reframe for family drama is sometimes you might you might need to give yourself a time out and back away. I'm 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 not going to be the one who's involved with it. Not me, not today. And guess what? That's okay too. I don't want to play. I am not going to participate in this drama. But most importantly, don't you be the one bringing the drama. It's easy to say them, they did it. They did this, they did that. But are you the one bringing the family drama? Um. Hmm. Another cause I'll mention is not getting enough sleep or rest. So what does that have to do with anything? 
when we don't get enough sleep, our mood changes. Let yourself get real tired and you will see just how quickly everyone and everything can get on your nerves. Your attention, you, know, you just become short with people. Um, you become that um, driver who is honking their horn. You're just like, Ugh, because you're not getting enough sleep and rest. You know, just letting your body decompress. Those can really um, impact your mood. But during this season of busyness, you know, we got to plan for the holiday dinner. Well, I got to go shopping because I got to get everything done because, you know, I'm the one that has to get it done. Okay, I'm going to delegate, but I still got to do this. After I go shopping, then I have to make sure we decorate because, you know, it's just got to be pretty. You got people over. It wants to look good. And you go on and on and on. Whew. You don't have time to breathe. So sleeping and resting. Two different things of resting. Can you just let your mind rest? Because maybe you're laying down and you're going through a checklist in your brain of everything that has to be done. Check, 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 check. And you can't even rest because you've got too much to think about. Let it go. Ooh, those can all play into the holiday blues, those negative feelings that you feel during this time of year. And there are many more. That is not at all an exhaustive list just some that people generally experience. So now I've given you this list of things that can cause, um, who cause it. Now, how do you know that it's really bothering you? What are some symptoms? Because it really is a real thing, the holiday blues. It could be the change in your weight or appetite. Now, I already said you might eat more or eat less, but maybe it's stress eating. And stress eating is when I need my comfort food. I'm just eating and I don't even know why because I've got so much going on and you may gain weight or lose weight. Or maybe I just, I just can't eat. I'm just too tired to eat. Oh my gosh. You know, you're experiencing that. So your, your um, appetite can change. Your sleep can change. I already said how much um, sleep or rest are important. When you have too much going on, it's hard to sleep, like I just said. And you, But when you notice it, it's happening. Or you find yourself, you literally are aware that you are feeling depressed or just irritated. Everything's getting on your nerves. These are those symptoms. Another symptom is difficulty, difficulty concentrating. Why? Because you have so much going on in your mind, you can't focus. No, I can't concentrate. I, I just can't. Oh, I got too much. Okay. That's when you need to back off. But that's at holiday blues. When also, it may not even be that you have too much going on. Your mood can be so depressed that it makes it difficult to just focus because I'm just not here. I'm not present. I'm not in the moment because I'm depressed. And the overarching thing is I'm depressed. And because you're feeling that way, yeah, it is too difficult to think about anything. Everything becomes just too hard to think. Hmm. Another symptom of the holiday blues is feelings of worthlessness and guilt. And these are symptoms of depression. And as I said earlier, sometimes during the holidays, you're evaluating the year. What did you do? I didn't do enough. I didn't manage this year well. Oh, I'm just no good. I, I just, I messed up this year. And that can lead to that feeling of worthlessness. See, I, I'm just no good. If I was, I would have done the X, Y, Z. Again, change your focus. Maybe you did mess up. I'm not going to negate that. Maybe you really had a sucky year and you didn't do things the way they needed to be done. But guess what? You're still here and you have the opportunity to try again. And start over. Every day is a new day. So if you had... 20 bad days. Day number 21 is still another day to start over. So when those feelings of worthlessness or guilt, I should have, if I would have, could have, if I would have, could have, if I would have done this, yeah, I should have done this, I could have done that, that guilt. Well, you didn't. Now let's move forward. Instead of if I would have, change it to what will I? If I could have, what can I? So um, there's nothing in your music library. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it looks like one of my phones wants to just start talking. Um, so instead of that, if I woulda, coulda, shoulda, turn it to something um 
look at what you did do or what you will do in the future um, and make it uh, make it so. Uh, what else is on my list of uh, things that are symptoms of this? Oh, your anxiety can also increase with the holiday blues. Uh, you can be more worried, more anxious, more intense. So another part of just having this, this mood in the holidays, your overall demeanor, your overall being is depressed. It's anxious. You see the negative and not the positive. So that anxiety comes in when it's strictly related to holidays could be, you know, what if, oh, what if, what if, what if, what if, when we go down this long road of what if the dinner isn't right? What if I mess up? What if I have a car accident today? It's raining outside and, and I'm going, you know, and we see everything becomes that negative what if. And I always tell my clients, when you're going down that road of what ifs, the first thing to ask yourself is, and what if it doesn't? You know, that's your answer to what if I, what if the dinner doesn't go well? What if I burn the turkey? What if we have a storm? What if, and what if you don't? And and just turn around. But uh, so when you find yourself overly worried, overly anxious um, during this time of year, give yourself again that time out. Breathe, take a moment, relax. Um, the last thing I'll mention that's part of the symptoms of the holiday blues is you just don't have pleasure in doing anything that would normally bring you joy. It's just eh, eh. So these are symptoms of depression that are all that I mentioned, but they're prevalent in your life during the holiday. You just don't want to do anything. Well, that's what they are. So what do you do to manage it? We've talked about um, some examples of it, talked about some symptoms of holiday blues. So now what? The first thing I always want to say is be gentle with yourself. You know, when you find yourself going through all of this and life is just not doing what you wanted to do, be gentle with yourself. Realize that um, you're not alone in what you're feeling. There would not be a name for the holiday blues if you were the only one who had it. Think about that. If during this time of year you're feeling some kind of way, as they say, you're not the first or the last. So be gentle with yourself and say, okay, this is what I'm experiencing. Whew, mm, I gotta sit in this for a moment. Give yourself the same grace you give others. You know, if it was your friend going through this, you you want to talk to them nicely. You want to, you know, make them their little comfort basket. You're doing all this for other people who are going through something. Do it for yourself. Be gentle. Give yourself a break. Change your focus. Focus on um, what you do have. If you're in a position where there are traditions you don't have, are no longer there, you can mourn the loss of them. And we'll talk about that in the next section on grief, but create new ones. Take some time to just relax. Give yourself a break. Relax. Um, get moving. You know, there is so much... Um, about movement and releasing the exercise and releasing the endorphins in your brain, that feel-good chemical. So move. Don't just sit around, even though you're relaxing, go for a walk. Like today eh, in Arlington, not a day to go for a walk because um, it was raining and icky outside. But if you can't go for a walk, I always say there is the world of YouTube. You can put, you can find a YouTube uh, exercise for any mobility level. You can just type it in. I am not a yoga person, which is very good for, you know, managing uh, your mood. Yoga is very good for that. I'm not a yoga person because getting on the floor doing all those poses, not my thing. So one time I decided to type in, because I'm always saying YouTube, you can just type it in and you'll find it. I typed in um, yoga exercises for old people. It came up. Not a chair exercise. Then I typed in, yes, I use this word. I'm going to tell you, yoga exercises for fat people. So I'm like, all it is and getting down on the floor. It's a little too much of me to be out doing all of those poses. Guess what? Here's the videos popped up. So 
when you're thinking about movement, moving, whatever your activity level, whatever your size, you can just go to YouTube, get moving, release those endorphins in your brain. Uh, that can improve your mood. Um, even though we want to improve your mood, take a moment to sit with your feelings and find a proper place for them in your life. You know, what do I want to do with this? If it's grief, is it sadness? If it's just, I'm just depressed. Don't ignore it. Own it. Why do you need to own it? If I own it, it is mine. I can. I have the power to get rid of it. I have the authority to get rid of it. I have the right to get rid of it. And I will find the ability to get rid of it. So sit with your feelings, figure out what they are, take ownership of them, and then decide what to do with them. Um, avoid isolation because it's easy to, when you're in this depressed mood, to say, you know, I don't need to be around people because I'm just not in a good mood and I'm just going to bring everybody down. And that may be true, but begin to rephrase it, reframe it again. Okay, I'm going to go out for a limited amount of time. I'm going to go out just so I can be with others and choose who you're going to be around. Choose what activity you want to do. Choose something that, you know, I really do like doing this. I'm going to allow myself to feel good. I'm going to only stay for 30 minutes because that's all I can handle. And do your 30 minutes and leave. But avoid that isolation because that can increase those negative feelings. Whew. The last area I want to just look at as we're talking about these wonderful holidays. And I wanted to give a special focus to grief. Yes, grief. What do we do with grief? Because it's real during the holidays. And let me say this. Grief is not just the loss of a person. It can be the loss of a circumstance. It can be loss of a situation. We grieve so many things. And that grief can be paramount during the holidays, not just the grief of a person. Um, but first, let's look at if it's a grief of a loved one. What if this is the first Christmas without them? That can be very challenging. If you are uh, a family or used to getting together with friends and that person is no longer around and it's the first time, your holiday may feel like it's just, I don't know what to do with it. It's too much. It's too soon. Still, don't isolate. Find a way to be with those that are still here that you love. Um, their grief share is a program that deals with grief and they have a statement that says grief is the price you pay for love. Think about that. You only grieve those you love. If I don't love you or you weren't important to me, I may say, oh, it's sad. I'm sad you're gone. But there isn't that grief. There isn't that feeling of, oh, my gosh, I miss you. Mm -mm. So grief is the price you pay for love. If you love them, you will grieve that person. Um, don't run away from it. Again, it's just like with your emotions. Sit in the moment of that grief. Talk to someone who will listen and not judge you. Now, guess what? Grief does not have a timeline. It may be somebody that died in 2023 that you're grieving. It may be somebody who died in 2003. It may be somebody who died in 1983. It doesn't matter. Something can happen to cause that moment of hurt and um, just hurt and angst in your heart because this person is gone. So what can you do? Hmm. Find a memory of that person that makes you smile, a memory that makes you laugh, a memory that makes you just go, mm, only them. And when that happens, just hold on to that memory, that part of you that loves them, that makes you smile. Because if you love them and you're grieving them, something, there had to be something good about them. So hold on to that. It doesn't matter how long. Something else you can do is make yourself a comfort kit. This is a little, it can be a container. I would recommend decorating it, making it pretty. And it can be a box or it can just be a plain box. It could be a shoe box, but it's filled with things that bring you comfort. What are some things that could be in there? Oh, candles, essential oils that make you feel good. 
And essential oils have so many purposes in it. So that right essential oil for what you need. Um, some bath salts, bubble baths, something. I'm just going to go soak in a tub and have the aroma, things for aromatherapy. Some feel-good music. Music can totally impact our emotions and our mood. So you don't need the music that's going to bring you down. It might not need to be that person's favorite song because that might bring you down and not up. But feel-good music. And that feel-good music is whatever feels good to you. There is no magic into feel-good. What brings you up? Maybe a good book because you're going to give yourself that time out. Let it not be a serious book. I um, recently have discovered the art of when you need that break and that time out from life, read read some junk. You know, uh, by that I mean it doesn't have to be you know anything that's going to be cerebral and improve your life and your mind. It's just something you're reading for the fun and enjoyment. Because if you want this time out to manage your grief, you want to elevate your mood and maybe just something fun. Also in this in this comfort box could be um, a journal and a pen. Maybe you want to just journal your feelings. And that's a very positive thing to do. You might also have a stress ball. Just mm, 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 a coloring book. They're adult coloring book. And for some people, that is a very positive thing to do. Maybe you want to have your comfort snack. This might be the time for that chocolate or that hot candy or that sour candy. Something, you know, just a little something that just ah, feels good. And maybe having some affirmations in that box that are quotes or positive sayings that you pull out to read when you're in that zone. And finally, maybe some prayers you pull out and you read to feed your spirit. Because as you're feeding your spirit, you can feed your mood and you can elevate your mood. So create your own comfort box. So maybe this is something you create for any time during the year, just when you're feeling some kind of way, things are not right. You have that comfort box and there's no right or wrong. Those are just some things I thought about putting in a comfort box. There may be others. What brings you comfort? For me, um, I can say I would think of decorating it, making it pretty too. But it might just be, I'm going to take a shoebox because I don't need anybody even knowing it's my comfort box and I pull it out. But have your comfort box. So when you're thinking about that person, you can take yourself to a place where you own those feelings, but you take care of yourself. I said we look at a loss of circumstance. That could be maybe you moved. And this is the first time you're spending the holiday away from family. Even if you're getting with, they're going to come to you, you're not there for everything you're used to. Maybe it's a loss of a job. And maybe our self-esteem and sense of self has been wrapped up in that job and it's not here anymore. So not only do I not have the finances, I just don't have the recognition. My job defined me and it's gone. What do you do with that? And could be the loss of a pet. Those of us who are not pet people don't understand the full impact of what it's like to lose a pet. If you've had this dog for 14 years and they've been in your home for 14 years, yeah, you can grieve that pet. What if you stayed where you are, but the loved ones moved away? These are all um, circumstances. It's not a person, but you can grieve any of that. What if it's a change in holiday activity where you had a certain activity level and things change? COVID did this for a lot of people who, you know, that first year when we were in lockdown, you didn't um, go around people. So no one was celebrating the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, big dinners. Uh, It just didn't happen for so many people. What if your grief is both? loss of a person and loss of a circumstance, Uh, meaning what that person, how that represented and how that played around. Um, So personally, back in that COVID moment, um, during that time, uh, one of my best friends passed away with cancer during COVID. That same Christmas, uh, normally Christmas, you know, we're a family. My family has dwindled down pretty small, my family of origin, meaning my sister and I. So we always spend, you know, Christmas together. That Christmas, 
um, after the lockdown, she and her husband had COVID. I'm here in Dallas area. So I had lost my friend and it was the first year without her. Um, and that was something that I was missing. And we, she was the um, holiday diva. She decorated even her bathroom for Christmas. So that was a difference in um, just being around somebody, then not being in Houston for Christmas and not having that so much difference. Um, so I had a circumstance that I wasn't where I needed to be in life of a person, and it was COVID. I'm a per moving up here to um, the Dallas area for me represented a big change in um, a change in how I manage the holidays, a big change. A big change in how I manage the holidays. And it was a hard change. It was a big change. I, here is the example for like about five, the, at least the last five years before I moved here. I would, um, we celebrated Christmas at my house. I was the only one who had the young child in the house. So Christmas morning was at my house. I would cook breakfast. Well, then we'd have Christmas dinner at my house. Then my dad's birthday was two days after Christmas. And guess what? We did a birthday party and birthday celebration at my house for him. Then two days, a day or two after that, we had Kwanzaa. We celebrated that at my house. After we celebrated Kwanzaa, sometimes it'd be New Year's Day at my house. That's like five celebrations in one week. Did I love it? Yes, I thrived on it. I am. That was when that uh, people person part of me um, came in, and I just thrived on all of that. And believe it or not, that wasn't stressful. As a friend of mine says, I was the one who would have everybody come and help clean up between uh, between parties. Because and I would want a different theme and colors and everything, you know, the right plates and everything for each event until it got to New Year's Day and everything that was left over. Those were our cups and and plates. But when you lose that that year when I was here and my friend had died and I wasn't celebrating, that was very depressing for me. I'm very hard. And I had to stop and realize when I sat in my grief and sat in my emotions, I realized it was a loss, not just the loss of a person. Because in that three year span, my father had died, my sister had died, and my best friend had died. That's a lot. Bam, bam, every year. And then none of the holiday celebrations. So you have to sit in your grief sometime and figure out what it is, what's going on. So. I thought we we're going to end there early, but it's okay. We're ending at the regular time. Um, when you are going through this holiday and you have to think, am I going to run from it or run to it? Run to it with all the gusto you can. If it's bringing you down and you're experiencing some holiday blues, sit with it, figure out what's going on. Manage it. And you don't have to manage it alone. There are sometimes you might need some professional help. That's why we as mental health professionals are here. Get the help you need to say, you know what? Oh, this is rough. If you're grieving and experiencing grief, get help. Grief is real. It doesn't go away on its own. It doesn't just disappear. You might need some help. Remember, grief is the price you pay for love. So that person you're loving, you loved, and you still love, and you're missing, it's okay. Sit with it. So our call to action is run toward the happy. Reframe the negative and find something positive. If this wasn't the year for you, you did survive. If the holidays aren't your thing and you're not looking forward to them, at least look forward to you. What do you need to do for you? Find that happy moment. Find that joy. Don't let it go. Maybe you need some help finding that joy from a friend, from a professional, but find the joy. Don't let it go. And always vote, vote, vote. There was an election this week, and hopefully you got out there and voted. Hopefully you were an educated voter in my 
precinct, my area, we only had those 14 proposals. I had to read them over and over to figure out. But I always say vote, vote, vote. How does that even manage with this topic? Laws can be impacted that can, laws can be enacted that can impact what you're able to do, which can impact your holidays, which can impact your mental health. Well, I'm Bronwyn Lucas, the um, licensed professional counselor here with Black Mental Health is Black Health. Good health to you. Good happy holidays. We'll be back next week with another topic and a guest and I'll see you soon. If you find yourself in need of help, mental health help, reach out. Um, you can DM me and find me, or you can go to my website, ablecc.org. I'm here to help you become a better you. Bye now.